Hi YouTube, I've been meaning to make a video about this since February, no kidding when this was posted, but just kept putting it off and I'm glad I did though because some other stuff has kind of come about here. Uh, I just saw a big channel talking about it and I wanted to, it kind of kick-started my, um, you know, interest in making this video again. So anyway, this big study that came out earlier this year, Solar Mystery, What Happened to the Sun in 5,480 B.C. And long story short is they did these tree rings. They analyzed these tree rings from these bristlecone pine trees, the second oldest tree known about 5,000 years supposedly. And somehow through these tree rings, they could determine that the sun all of a sudden, for whatever reason, freaked out and spit a whole bunch of carbon-14 and just basically life on Earth changed. And there's no explanation for it. They don't understand why. Okay? Um, and what's interesting is some of the comments below, there were people saying that there were civilizations that absolutely just flourished whenever this took place. That they were there, and or they weren't there, and then boom, they were huge flourishing civilizations right around this time that this was all going on. Because in my opinion, this has happened a bunch of times before. The sun, it, 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 it dies and is reborn or whatever the case may be. It changes, it mutates, and we've been through this who knows how many times before. And so here's science, Stephen, telling you that they can't explain it, but, but tree rings, you know, and I don't care about that stuff. Because as far as I'm concerned, it's got nothing to do with tree rings. We don't know how old any of this stuff is. It's them telling you right there that the sun freaks out, does some crazy stuff, mutates, changes the planet, and no one knows why. And here's the, the thing with that. You have this thing called the young faint sun paradox. If you've never heard of it, I just didn't hear about it until recently. Or long story short with this is they say that this was by Carl Sagan too back in the 70s, like 72 or something like that, where he came up with this question that's still unresolved today, 40-some years later, saying that back then the sun would have been only 70% as intense as it is now, so basically this place should be one big ice cube. So it's a big mystery that if the sun was, another way of saying it was, if it was a lot dimmer back then, which is, I don't remember how he came to that realization or whatever, but this is a true thing, or a real thing, I mean, this is the real paradox, as you can see, like they can't figure it out, according to there's enough data or whatever to suggest that the sun was a lot dimmer back then, so they just can't figure out why this place isn't one big ice cube, they're stumped, you know, they know the answers to this stuff, but they don't, they're not going to just come out and tell you, because then that would reveal what this place really is and how it's being controlled. Because here it is. I mean, we see this thing that's out there every day. You got NASA supposedly studying it. Here's Carl singing out in the 70s coming up with this. And here it is 40 some years later with all this technology. And we still don't know anything more about this sun now that we did 40 some years ago when Carl Sagan brought this stuff up. You know, and at some point you would think they would just say, well, okay, you know what? Maybe this is bigger than man. Maybe God, maybe something supernatural, maybe something spiritual is going on here. Nope, but they keep going, we're going to find a scientific explanation for this. Because it's a game. They, it's, there's enough artifacts and historical records of something that happens every whatever amount of years. Something huge happens in the sky, whether it's this Planet X, Nibiru, um, the sun dying out, a new one reborn, whatever the case may be, it happens and the entire place changes. It mutates. It, it's, it's all associated with radiation and this magnetosphere or the firmament or the energy field or whatever it is that surrounds this place. And that's what I think. And, and the whole before this last time, supposedly when Saturn was the main sun, it was called the, the, it was called the Purple Dawn. It was never all fully light. It was never all. It was never dawn. It was never dusk. It was partly. It was like twilight. It was. It was. It was the purple dawn. It was right in the middle. And then we fell into this duality, this now just day and night. But it was just a a constant like purple haze, which would explain when even Carl Sagan said that the sun a long time ago was seventy percent dimmer. Yep. So just like that song, purple haze, right? Jimi Hendrix with an X in his name for the Saturn stuff. Their association right there. The purple haze, excuse me while I kiss the sky. A kiss is another another way of saying collision. Just like with CERN, colliding light, the star fell, boom. And now we're into day and night, as opposed to when we were just twilight, in between dusk and dawn. The purple dawn, the purple haze, look it up, you'll see. So then you have this Cassini mission, right? And we've talked about this before. I don't know if it's one big metaphor. I don't have any idea. 
okay, let's not get into all the planets and all that stuff is fake. It doesn't matter because something big is happening regardless of what's going on. We don't know, but something big is happening. So in, if you haven't heard of this thing, in September 15th, it's called the Grand Finale even, which happens to all be during the Feast of Trumpets. And the Bible, of uh, the book of Revelation describes it with, what sounds a whole lot like this pretty well about a, a bright burning star falling to the earth. And so on 15 September, supposedly NASA is going to plunge this satellite Cassini into Saturn. But they're saying, don't worry, everything's going to be cool, which they're wrong all the time. So who knows what's going to happen? And what's interesting is this whole mission started, in on, started on October 15th, 1997, and it ends September 15th, 2017, which brings the grand total of 7,275 days, 19 years, 11 months, or 9-11. And I'm currently watching this movie now called Sunshine that came out in 2007. That takes place in 2057. Isn't that interesting? A team of international astronauts are sent on a dangerous mission to reignite the dying sun with a nuclear fission bomb. And there's even a part in this where this, this guy, he's a scientist, he just can't wait to do this. He says it's going to be beautiful. A dying star being born into a new star, he says. I mean, it sounds exactly like what they're doing right now. And here's, it's a real thing. It's called Project Lucifer. University Today. Project Lucifer. Will Cassini turn Saturn into a second sun? Project Lucifer. Could the plutonium fuel on board the Cassini mission cause a nuclear chain reaction on Saturn? I don't know. Maybe. That's the question I'm posing in this video. Maybe it can. Can it? Will it? Could it? And then at the same time that all this is coming up, now they, they post for the first time a dark matter bridge holding galaxies together has been captured for the first time. Of course, because whenever this happens, the door is going to open and people are going to finally see that we're connected to another dimension, multiple dimensions, other realities, whatever the case may be. I mean, it's talked about in mythology. It's called the Rainbow Bridge, about how we used to just come and go as we please, supposedly. I mean, I don't know. I'm just telling you what mythology says. And here's this Golden Gate Bridge. I thought I'd just tie into this. I thought it was it's sad how they're they're building and creating a suicide net. Okay, the Golden Gate Bridge. My my opinion on this is why all these people and this blew my mind. I saw a documentary. I think it's just called the Bridge. Uh, years and years ago. I mean, long like two early two thousands. I think it was um, long before I knew anything. And it blew my mind to not know that so many people go to this bridge and kill themselves on it every year. I mean, it's it's absolutely mind-blowing. And I really think that is because it, people are drawn to this thing. The Golden Gate Bridge. They're talking about the other side. And people are just drawn to it. And they get there and they're just, I think, I think it just jogs their memory. It jogs their subconscious. And they're just overwhelmed with this feeling like, wait a minute. Like, this isn't real. This place isn't right. Like, I'm not where I'm supposed to be. I'm not home. I don't remember it being like this. Like, this is not, what is going on here? Well, that's just me. Thanks to my subscribers.